created it by hand from mighty mountains to the raging sea to every leaf on every single tree it's in the holy book just open up and take a look A long time ago, there were many, many people on the earth. And everyone did whatever they wanted to without love for each other. They cared more about themselves than they did about other people. God was very sad because everyone had forgotten his way. Everyone, that is, except for Noah and his family. Noah and his family worked very hard, and they kept all of God's ways in their hearts. All right, that's enough for today. You boys can finish that tomorrow. Uh, uh, but Father, we almost had it. Just a few more minutes. God knows how hard you work, Japheth, my boy, and so do I. But God also wants us to keep up our strength so that we can do His work. You're right again, Father. You must be the wisest man in the world. Me? Oh, no. I might be the happiest man in the world, but the wisest? I think not. But enough talking. We'd better hurry. Ah, I think we're having your mother stew tonight. We wouldn't want it to get cold. <laughs> Noah and his family had a hard life, but they loved each other very much, and they always had enough to eat. Noah never forgot that it was God who made all of those things possible. And thank you, God, for everything you've given to me and my family. Thank you for the strength to work hard, and for fields that are good for growing, and for the food on our table. Amen. 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 What's this? It sounds like we have visitors. Well, you must be hungry. Dear, will you please bring me a bit of meat and a bone from the stew? I think our friends need something to eat. All of God's creatures are important. There you go. Enjoy. Nothing like a good dinner, isn't that right? You're a good man, Noah. More? <laughs> <laughs> One night after supper, everyone kissed Noah goodnight and went to bed. But Noah didn't go to bed at his usual time. He had a strange feeling. You look sleepy, dear. Uh. Why don't you go to bed? Are you coming? Soon. I don't feel tired. I think I'll go out and look at the stars for a bit. Noah went out of his house for some fresh air. He had a feeling he couldn't explain. He didn't know that God was leading him outside. Ooh, what is this? Noah? God, is that you? Yes, Noah, it is. Please listen to the important things I have to say to you. 
Noah, people do not love one another as they should. So I have decided to wash the earth with a flood and start over. This is terrible news. Don't be afraid, Noah. I'm telling you this because you are the only man who still has me in his heart. I have chosen you and your family to help me start over. Listen carefully. I want you to build a boat, Noah. An ark. So much to do. Oh, I've got to get my boys and have them help me. Wake up! I need you to help me with a big project. Yes, I'm serious. An ark. A big, big ark. <laughs> it's okay. Go ahead and laugh. You'll see. <laughs> this field should be big enough. Build it from fresh, sticky wood. Make it 450 feet long, 75 feet across, and 45 feet high. Seal the planks with tar. Inside, build an upper, middle, and lower deck. Hi, Father! Hi. Make an opening all the way around the arc, just below the upper deck. Yay! And last, Put a door in the side big enough for the largest animals of the earth to walk through. Next, bring two of every animal on the earth with you, each with a safe place on the ark.
Noah and his family worked very hard. Father, we're finished! Yay! Yay! This old man who says a flood is coming. <laughs> Lead me to the crazy fool. My father is no fool. Only a fool would build a big silly boat in the middle of his field. <laughs> now let's take a good look at. <gasps> you really are a crazy old man. Anyone who would do this. You would be wise to listen to what I say. God has told me that a terrible flood is coming. So much to do, so little time. Father? It's fair to warn them, Shem. Warn us about what? The flood that's never coming? <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. Let's leave this crazy old man alone. There, there now. Thank you for helping us. I guess we made ourselves some friends, eh? <laughs> and it looks like we have our first passengers. Now, if I can only figure out how we're going to find all the rest of the animals. Shh, quiet now, you two. Can't you see he's trying to think? Father, look! It's a miracle! And it was a miracle. God had done something wonderful. He'd brought two of every animal to the ark. And they were on their very best behavior. Even the lions lay down with the lambs. Tigers? <laughs> Wildebeests? <laughs> Zebras? Whoa! <laughs> God will protect us all. Well, that does it. Everybody's here. What do we do now, Father? We wait for the rain. It doesn't look like we'll have to wait long, Father. Look! Suddenly, the clouds began to gather and cold winds began to blow. Noah, the time has come to take your family and the animals onto the ark. Soon the rain will start. Let's go! Everybody on? All clear down here. Ready. I'll close the door. Be afraid, my dear. God will protect us all.
The rain covered the whole earth. Even the highest mountains disappeared underwater. Except for the animals and people on the ark, there was nothing else left. During their long trip, Noah and his family became very close with the animals. They were all good friends. watched to see when the rain would stop, but it just kept coming down. It rained and rained like it would never stop. It rained for a month, then another week. Then, after 40 days and 40 nights, the rain stopped. Noah was so excited, he called a family meeting. I've called you all here because I have a surprise for you. The rain has stopped. What? That's wonderful. <laughs> True. When do we get off? Well, I think if all goes well, the ground should start to peek through in about another, oh, six months or so. Everybody was disappointed to hear this news because although they all loved one another, they were all pretty tired of being on that ark. But they waited patiently. Many months passed.
Well, what did you see? What did you see? Same as always, uh... nothing but sea. We're never going to get off this boat. How are we even going to know if the land is dry? How are we even going to know if we're anywhere near land? This is hopeless. Now, what kind of talk is that? Are you the same men who helped me build God's Ark? Hasn't he looked out for us this long? Of course, Father is right. But can we at least try to find out if there's any dry land? This got Noah thinking. Finally, he got an idea. He went and got one of the ravens and brought him to the slit in the ark. Then he let him go. He thought if the raven found land, he might bring something back with him. But when the raven returned, he didn't bring anything with him. So Noah decided he would try letting a dove go. Good luck! <laughs> but the dove returned with nothing as well. Aww. But Noah knew God wouldn't abandon them. He waited a while longer, then, one last time, he sent out the dove again. <laughs> this time, when the dove returned, it brought something back. In its mouth, it carried a branch from an olive tree. Father, this is wonderful news. We must be very close to dry land. Yes, son. If you believe in God, he will save us all. And you protected Yay! us too. And sure enough, very soon, the ark landed on top of a tall mountain. When it was safe to come out, God spoke to Noah again. Noah, you and your family and the animals can come out now. The earth is dry. Go out into the world and have many children and tell them about me. And so you will always know that I won't ever flood the world again. I'm going to leave a gift in the sky after it rains. Something to remind you of my promise. And so Noah and his family thanked God for all he had done for them. And Noah's sons had many, many good and strong children who loved God very much. Do you know how the world began? How God created it by hand from mighty mountains to Raging sea to every leaf on every single tree. It's in the holy book. Just open up and take a look.
years ago, in a land called Egypt, there lived a very mean king. Egyptian kings were called pharaohs. Faster, better, more. The Pharaoh made all of the people of Israel living in Egypt work as slaves. They had to build the buildings and lift many heavy things. They had no time to rest and little to eat. They were not free and they were very unhappy. But the worst thing of all was, one day the Pharaoh decided that the firstborn sons of the Israelites would be killed. Oh no! They won't get my baby. I'll find some way to save him. Jochebed, the mother of Moses, decided to float her baby down the river. Shh, don't be afraid. I won't let the Pharaoh hurt you. Your sister Miriam will be right here to make sure you're safe. baby needs a home. I'll take him to the palace and take care of him there. Excuse me, princess. If you need a nurse for the baby, I know a good one who lives nearby. Her name is Jochebed. Thank you. Bring her to the palace. They named the baby Moses, and he was raised in the Pharaoh's palace as an Egyptian. But Jochebed was near Moses while he was a child to teach him right from wrong. Ha! <laughs> Moses, time for your lessons. Now, did you do your homework? Sure I did. When I went out this morning, I saw a slave master hitting one of the Israelites. He was wrong, Moses. All people should be treated with respect. And Jochebed taught him that the Israelites in Egypt were unhappy because they were not free. Many years later, when Moses grew up to be a strong young man, he came upon some Egyptians who were treating people very poorly. You're lazy. Get up, get up, and get back to work right now or else. Leave him alone. You shouldn't treat anyone like that. He deserves it. He's pretending he's hungry and tired because he's too lazy to work. I'm teaching him a lesson about... Leave him alone. It was very unusual for someone to help an Israelite like that. Everyone told each other what happened. Moses was sure he had done the right thing. But he knew the Pharaoh would be very angry. So Moses left Egypt all by himself, knowing that he was really an Israelite. He wanted to go to another land where he would not have to see his people be treated so badly. After traveling for 40 days, Moses found himself in the land of Midian.
In Midian, Moses got married and had a family. He lived in Midian for so long that he almost forgot about Egypt and about the poor Israelites. Until one day, Moses was looking after a flock of sheep up in the hills, and it was there that he saw an amazing sight. Come here, little guy. <laughs> I'll get you. <laughs> now I've got you. Huh? Moses, come closer. Uh, who's there? God. The Israelites in Egypt are unhappy because they are not free. Go to the Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. Why have you chosen me? Don't be afraid. I will be with you. But will they believe me? I will give you signs to show the people that I am with you. Throw your staff on the ground. Now reach down and pick it up by the tail. Trust me, the people will believe you. Now go. And so Moses returned to Egypt to do what God said. Are you Moses? I have heard about you. What are you doing back here after all these years? I am here because God sent me. He wants you to free the people of Israel. Oh, he does, does he? Too bad for him. Who is this God, anyway? I've never heard of him. Have you? No, sir, your, your most, most royal, royal wonderful, wonderful highness. highness. Well then, this God of yours must not exist, right? Yes, your, your most, most royal, royal wonderful, wonderful highness. highness. Right. You there, come here. We're too nice to the Israelites. After all, they have a big, strong god on their side. Tell my slave masters not to give them any more straw for the bricks they make. From now on, they have to find their own straw. Yes, your most royal wonderful. I said go! Ha! Don't try and tell me what to do. I'm the pharaoh. It's time for your bath, Your Royal Highness. Uh. I won't give up that easily. And so Moses returned. God wants you to let the Israelites go free. Oh, haven't we already done this? It'll take a miracle before I listen to another word you're saying. See the power of God, the only true and living God. Oh. Silence! Nothing but foolish tricks. Besides, watch this. Think twice before you try to trick me again. I am not trying to trick you. I am warning you. God can perform many miracles. <laughs> that proves nothing. Get out of my sight. I'll be back. And the next morning, Moses did come back. Pharaoh, let the Israelites go free. If you do not, God will let plagues happen to Egypt. The plagues will bring very bad things. No! See for yourself the power of God.
It is blood. <laughs> Just another magic trick. Ugh. Go away. You? Again? What do you want now? Let my people go. If you don't, God will let frogs come all over the land. Frogs will sleep in your bed and eat your food and... Frogs? I love frogs. Why, when I was a little boy... Uh, never mind about that right now. Who cares about a few frogs? Get out of here! Find Moses and bring him to me. Now. You, make the frogs go away. Do you promise to let the Israelites go free? Yes, yes, just get rid of these pesky things. God made the frogs go away, but the Pharaoh didn't keep his promise. He did not free the people of Israel. So God allowed more plagues to happen in Egypt. God let lots and lots of gnats come to Egypt. They flew everywhere. Flies flew everywhere. But the Pharaoh still wouldn't let the Israelites go, so the animals got very sick. And then boils grew on the skins of the Egyptians. And terrible hail fell down from the skies. And the locusts came. And ate their clothes. Next, everything was as dark as night for three whole days. Each time a plague happened to Egypt, the Pharaoh promised to let the people of Israel go free. But each time he changed his mind and broke his promise. Now will you let the people of Israel leave? No, I will not. I've tried to warn you, but you won't listen. Please hear me now, or you'll be very sorry. The last plague will be the worst. The firstborn sons of the Egyptians will die. What has your God done? He has taken my son from me. Leave Egypt at once and take your people with you. Moses told the Israelites to get ready to leave Egypt right away. He knew the Pharaoh might change his mind again, so they packed and left as fast as they could. I can't believe we're actually going. It's just as Moses promised. A land where we could be free. It seems like a dream. But it's not a dream. At last, we're on our way home. Single file for a while, then scatter to and fro. Trusting Moses knows his way. Singing as we go Mighty Moses and the Israelites Thousands of sandals in the sand Mighty Moses, what an amazing sight Leading us on to the promised land The day has dawned to journey on To a brand new Our way by night, a cloud will guide by day. 
thousands of sandals in the sand. Mighty Moses, what an amazing sight, leading us on to the promised land. Mighty Moses and the Israelites, thousands of sandals in the sand. Mighty Moses, what an amazing sight, leading us on to the And so, finally, the people of Israel left Egypt on the way to their homeland, the land of freedom. By day, a pillar of smoke guided them. And by night, a pillar of fire showed them the way. But back at the palace, the pharaoh had changed his mind again. I was a fool to let them go. Who will build our pyramids and grow our food and, and fan me when it is warm? We must get the Israelites back. Call my chariot. In the meantime, the Israelites had reached the Red Sea. Moses, look behind us! The Pharaoh's army! They'll be here soon! Oh no! Moses, what have you done to us? We would have been better off living unhappily in Egypt rather than dying here in the desert. Don't be afraid. God will protect us. Don't hurry, Moses. Rest tonight. Tomorrow morning, raise your hand and stretch out your staff over the sea. It will part, and you will be able to go through on dry land. Till morning. Then we'll recapture them. And when morning came, Moses stood by the sea and waved his hand over the waters. And the sea parted, just as God had promised. Come on, follow me. Come again! What are we going to do? Just wait. Then the sea fell upon the Egyptian army and stopped them. Thank you, God, for saving us. The Israelites passed through the Sinai Desert on their way to the land of Israel. When they were hungry, God sent them food. Mother, look! What is it? It was sweet, tasty bread that God had sent to feed the people. The Israelites called it manna, which meant, what is it? Mm. When the Israelites were thirsty, God sent them water. I 
milk instead. <laughs> <laughs> When the Israelites reached Mount Sinai in the middle of the desert, they set up camp near the foot of the mountain. It was time for God to give the people his laws. What is happening, Moses? What does God want? God is calling me. I am sure he has great plans for us. I must go ahead. And Moses climbed to the top of the mountain. I am ready for you. I have rules that I want to give the people of Israel. If they follow them, I will protect the people. Chisel out two stones and I will write them down. Always respect your father and mother. Do not kill anybody. Do not steal anything. God gave many other laws. He also told Moses how to build the home of worship where the Israelites would pray to God. God also told Moses that everybody should rest on the seventh day, just like he did when he created the world. Thank you, God. And this is how Moses led the people of Israel back to their homeland with the power of God and his sacred laws. These laws are called the Ten Commandments. Throughout the long journey, God helped Moses guide the Israelites home. Long ago, God sent his prophet Samuel to find the future king of the Israelites. Samuel, go to Jesse's house in Bethlehem. There you will find the new king over all Israel. Hmm, I wonder who that is. My sons, come into the house. There is a guest here to see you. Huh? Oh. David, you stay there and look after the sheep. We're going inside. Jesse, 
Uh, you say you have eight sons? Yes, and they are such fine young men. Here they come. chosen one. No, Samuel. You are thinking too much about what he looks like. You must look inside. You must look at his heart. Hmm. Wait. There are only seven here. Don't you have another son? Yes, but he is the youngest and the smallest. See him off there guarding the sheep? Him? No, it couldn't be him, could it? Thank you, I will leave now. You must look at his heart. What's your name, son? David. God has told me that you will be the new king of Israel someday. God is my friend. He helps me save my sheep. Yes, and one day I hope you save us all. Goodbye, David. Goodbye, and God bless. David's three older brothers were called away. David, come over here and pray with me as I bless the men of the family for battle. To go fight for the people of Israel. Eliab, Abinadab, Shammah, may the Lord bless you and keep you and bring you safely home from battle. But Father, what, son? You didn't bless me. I want to fight for Israel. Hmm. Don't worry about us, father. We're old enough. And strong enough. We can hardly wait to fight the enemy of God's chosen people, the evil Philistines. We'll win and be home before you know it, David. Everybody, wait! Don't leave without me. Please, please let me go, Father. I want to fight for the people of Israel, too. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? I may be small, but I'm brave. Why, just the other day, I saved our whole flock of sheep from a huge, ferocious lion. I hit him with a stone from my sling ah, and knocked him clean out. Want to see how good I'm getting? Whoa! No, David, not now. First, I had to sock that lion right on his nose. Bang! And then I shook that rascal by his whiskers. And then I pulled his jaws apart and rescued our little lamb. And, and then, and then, I'm not afraid of those Philistines. Oh. So please, Father, please let me go fight too. Whoa! <laughs> Guarding sheep isn't exactly the same as fighting the big bad Philistines, little David. Stay home, little brother. Father needs your help to watch over the sheep, and Father can watch over you. Grow up, little lamb. You may be brave enough to fight, but you're just too little. Abinadab, Shama, time to go. Goodbye, Father. 
Goodbye. 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 Bye. Goodbye. Someday I'll go to battle for the people of Israel, Father. Someday. Now the two great armies met for war in the middle of a vast valley. King Saul led the army of Israelites. But the enemy, the Philistines, had a giant on their side. The giant came marching across the valley toward the army of the Israelites. His legs were as big as tree trunks, his arms were strong as iron, and his steps made the whole earth tremble. <laughs> I am Goliath, the giant! And all of you are nothing but King Saul's little servants. Even if all of you fight me together, you can never beat me! <laughs> so swear yourselves. I dare you choose just one man brave enough to fight. Uh huh? Not me. Not me? Uh, not me either. <laughs> <laughs> Just one man. If he beats me, all of my men will be your servants. But if I slay him, all of you shall be our servants forever. Oh. Now, who is brave enough to fight? A giant! Just step forward! I'll be waiting! Every morning and evening for 40 days, Goliath marched to the center of the valley and gave his great battle cry. Ah! Ah! Yesterday? Not today either. None of us are brave enough to fight a ten foot giant. Or foolish enough. You are nothing but cowards! He said it. He's right. You bet he's right. Well, what do my brothers think? Could I? Ah! Whoa. Ooh. <sighs> no, don't even think about it. I'll try to. Ah! Ooh. You're not risking your life for him. Maybe I'll. Neither are you, Eliab. It's not worth it. Not even to marry King Saul's daughter. Oh, but wouldn't it be great? Being rewarded with the princess's hand in marriage for beating the giant? <sighs> oh, I wish this was over and we could go home to father in Bethlehem. 
The king will come up with a plan. You watch. <laughs> Bet I can get five in a row. Now remember, never be afraid. David, that was a good shot, son. Did you see that, Father? Maybe now you let me go join the army and fight with King Saul and the Israelites. No, son, I told you before, they won't take you. You're too young to be a soldier, and you've got to get some more meat on those bones of yours. But Father, I'm strong, and I can run like a deer. I said no, David. Now do as I ask, and take this food to your brothers. Then hurry home to tell me how they are. Now be careful, son. I pray you will bring good news. enough to fight? Are all the Israelites nothing but cowards? Oh my God! Oh my God. Shamo, what are you doing? Why are you running away? You'd better run yourself. If you know what's good for you. Watch out, boy! But who is that? It's Goliath, the giant. He's the champion for the Philistines against the people of Israel. But why won't anyone fight back? What do you mean? Look at him! He's too strong! He's over ten feet tall! None of us could even lift his spear! But what about King Saul? King Saul will give a rich reward to the man who slays that giant! He'll even let him marry his own daughter! And none of you are brave enough to try? No! Because none of us want to die for no reason! Eliab, why won't you fight? Ab Abinadab, why are you afraid? Shama, are you afraid of the giant too? All the soldiers are afraid, little David. Yes, little brother. Aren't you afraid too? You're too young to be here at all, David. Yes, little brother. Go home and take care of sheep where it's safe. No, I can't. Someone has to fight Goliath. But who? Everyone here is afraid. I'll fight the giant. I'm not afraid. You? Yes. God is stronger than Goliath. And God will help me. Go tell King Saul. I'm not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I have news for King Saul. What news? <laughs> so, there's this Israelite champion <laughs> who's really a young shepherd boy. 
<laughs> Says he wants to fight for King Saul and the Israelites. <laughs> Says God will help him fight the giant. <laughs> and he's never even been trained as a soldier. <laughs> well, tell the foolish lad to go home. King Saul is no use for jokes out here on the battlefield. <laughs> tell the boy. Tell the boy to come here. But sire... Joab, bring the boy here to me. Now. I wonder who he is. I wonder why he's the only one brave enough to fight the giant. He is, I understand, a giant of a man, and I am not. His spear appears to be the size of a small tree, and all I've got is a slingshot. This Philistine is large, but I know who's in charge. I have a giant of a god, you see, bigger than the trouble in front of me. And even nine feet tall, starts looking pretty small, next to the giant of This Philistine is large, but I Looks like he couldn't fight a flea. Make way for the little giant killer. I don't see any giant killer. I don't see anyone. Neither do I. Silence! Make way for this boy. Huh? huh? I said make way for the shepherd boy. The king wants to see him. Oh, oh yes. yes. Certainly, Certainly commander. commander. Right away, sir. <laughs> Your Majesty, I am... <laughs> Silence! Let the boys speak. Please, sir, don't be afraid of the giant. With God's help, I'll fight him for you. I'll fight Goliath for you and for all of the people of Israel. But how can a boy like you fight Goliath? You can't match him in size or strength or skill, my boy. Why, you've never even been trained for battle. It's true, Your Majesty. I am young and small, but God will make me strong. <laughs> if God saves my sheep, God will save me from this giant. Now let me fight the giant for you and the people of Israel. Yes, little David, and may God be with you. Joab, get my sword and shield, get my armor, Put them on young David. Huh? 
Joab, I said dress the boy for battle. Huh? Yes. Yes, your majesty. Well, didn't you hear King Saul? Do as he says! <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly pick up your sword, Your Majesty. And your shield is much too heavy for me. But, uh, David... God's help is all the armor I need. Please help me, God. Help me fight Goliath the giant for the people of Israel. Can you hear me, Goliath the giant? I am ready to fight. You can fight with sticks and stones? You'll be sorry! You fight me with your sharp sword and heavy spear, Goliath, but I fight you in the name of God. chased the Philistines away. The boy killed the giant! Goliath is dead! Where is the boy? Joab, bring him here to me. Little brother! It is you! Our brave baby brother David! Bring the boy here to King Saul! Thank you, my son. Thank God, Your Majesty. And that is how little David beat Goliath the giant with the help of God. This was only one of the many great adventures God had planned for David. David the shepherd boy grew up to become a great king who served God. Throughout David's long and adventurous life, he always remembered the comforting words of God.